shop, Rob from Wesley Summercraft here. Today I'm not actually making anything. We're going to do a shop tour and uh, we're going to talk about a whole bunch of hints and tips to keep your shop in order. So let's go. Let's walk in the front door and we'll take a tour around the whole shop. This is the door to my workshop. It's in the basement. And the first thing I come across is my dad's work boots. Now, in the back of my mind, Dad's always welcome in my shop, so that's why those boots are there, so he's more than welcome. Unfortunately, he did pass away in 2007, but he is the reason that I do woodwork. So, this is the partition that I put up in 2021, which is basically a wall of doors, which keeps the dust out of this area, which is where I do my casting and my stabilizing so I've got my vacuum pumps I've got two vacuum pumps there and a little air compressor for airbrushing not that I do a lot of airbrushing but it's there if I need it and then all of my pigments that I use and the cactus juice dyes and I've actually got a little uh, Bluetooth speaker radio there which I sometimes will have music playing through from my phone and uh, the humidistat there which is going to tell me the humidity of my basement because it, that's critical when you're casting um, you don't want it above 50% moisture or 50% humidity because you're, you're going to have problems you're going to run into problems with that so over here is my joiner planer which is on wheels so I can move that around no problem and the scroll saw again I don't use this a whole lot but it was a good deal so I bought it my son uses it more than I do and then a router table which is going to be going on wheels shortly I've got a base for it which is going to make it mobile because I don't want to use it in this room because I don't want to create the dust because my furnace is over there and then the Auteur laser right here, which is actually doing a project for me right now. It's actually burning. <clears throat> if we can get in there and have a look. It's Jim Morrison. You can see his arm and his hair just started. It's going to take four or five hours. That is Jim Morrison because he was a band member of The Doors. <laughs> so that's going to go on the wall right there so uh, just a reference to the doors a little call out to them and then back over there it's it's uh, there's a lot of wood storage back in that corner behind the furnace and on this shelf unit right here a lot of junk on this right now it's kind of where I put stuff temporarily it's a lot of UFOs unfinished objects and a garbage pail so I did mount a couple of drawers under here it's always good to have storage and I picked up these off the side of the road and uh, I got a ton of stuff in here not the ver not the best organized but uh, it just gives me a place to put stuff when I don't need it keeps it out of the way keeps it clean and keeps it looking tidy so going through the door just pull that these are the only two doors that actually work on this on this wall of doors and going through this is in the way but I don't use this door very often I usually just go through the one door and again this is my my MIDI lathe which is my buffing station which I use quite frequently with pens especially and that's on a base which has got wheels and again underneath sits the thickness planer which keeps it out of the way and then in the corner I picked this up for 20 bucks at a yard sale it's a filing cabinet which is perfect for keeping storage put stuff in it like a bottom drawer I've got a ton of pen blanks and everything to do with pens is in there and on there and then I just mounted a shelf up there yesterday actually for drill bits and forstner bits and uh, pen mills and things like that keeps them out of the way and then the rafters above I keep my clamps a couple of face shields 
more clamps and the table saw which again is on wheels so I can pull it out as is the mitre saw also on wheels so it can be pulled out so all of these three tools right here can be pulled out and to be used and then I've got a 12 foot bench with storage underneath which has got all my drills and other routers and all kinds of stuff under there microwave in the corner for my cold cup of tea because it gets forgotten about and a little oven there for drying wood if I need to or heating up molds for when I'm doing um, casting and of course I had a buddy of mine make that for me quite a while ago and it sat there it's oak not the best wood for uh, doing CNC work as I found out and my radio which I love it sat there for two years not working until I changed the fuse <laughs> so that's a project I'm working on right now this is going to be coasters it's scrap wood lots of strips of scrap wood and it will be cut into coasters crossways so that's what that's going to be I got the idea off of uh, a fella off of YouTube I forget his name young guy anyway I got the idea off of him coming around as my border collie over there in the corner which was my dad's poster big influence his dad there he is if it wasn't for him I wouldn't do wood turning or probably not much woodworking either so uh, he's always there looking over my shoulder and I hope he's proud I just wish he was here and we could be doing this together so my Canadian flag because I'm originally from Luton England Bedfordshire and I moved to Canada in 92 and I live in South Woodsley which is a small village in Essex County actually it's in Lakeshore but Essex County same thing um, and uh, South Woodsley that's where I got my name Woodsley Summercraft the reason it's Summercraft is because dad had a wood turning business logo called Malcraft because his name was Malcolm and it was Malcraft so that's where the Summercraft comes from and Woodsley is the town I live in so there's my little caddy which is where I put all of my sets of uh, jaws for my easy wood chuck which is an awesome system it's not cheap but uh, I think it was worth the money that I spent on it um, <clears throat> so I've got my Laguna Revo 1836 which I love it's an awesome lathe um, if you have any questions about that you can put them in the comments below because I know a lot of people are looking for different lathes and they got questions about it and uh, one of the most common questions comes up is about the uh, the banjo now I put this additional bolt through here because there was two holes here and tightened that up a little bit which meant this needed less tension to stop this from moving around so that's just a little tip there and uh, a bench here for just putting stuff while I'm working and then all my tools here it's a good idea to turn the lathe off if you're going to reach over the lathe I will always do that anyway my webcam is up there because I plan on doing lives but I haven't really done a lot now I did do some lives with the uh, Robin Steve show which is on YouTube there's I don't know how many episodes there are but we did a bunch it was fun so that's a little poem that I wrote before I started wood turning and it's called wood turning in fact my first video which I was very nervous I uh, I read that um, basically a little uh, nod to my dad again as is this which is his Malcraft, that was that's his and some of these tools were his too like the uh, the drill press so all of these are on wheels too in this corner so coming back around to the doors again I've got my uh, the Rikon 14 inch bandsaw which is awesome and that's on a base with wheels and uh, actually this isn't on wheels but it's very light it's spindle sander so it's very light it doesn't uh, way much so I can move it around fairly easily and uh, I keep a fire extinguisher at the door it's always good to have 
right now with that laser project on the go I'm keeping an eye on it because it could potentially cause a fire and then in the corner my King 14 inch sander which is good but I honestly think it's just a little bit too fast it, I wish it was a little bit slower but uh, that's on wheels too and then the drill press in the back there the Delta and these cutouts I use when I'm making bowl blanks I'll just screw put a screw through the middle onto the blank and I'll cut around that for the bowl blank lighting is a huge issue in a shop now I've put a couple of LED lights up there and there's also one behind me when I'm sitting at when I'm at the lay there's one above me and one behind me and then right here too is um, a blind which comes down to prevent the wood shavings going everywhere because without that they do go literally everywhere so it keeps them from here forward so it's a lot easier to clean up when I put that blind down here I've got the King low speed grinder with the 8 inch wheels um, it comes with aluminum oxide wheels and I replaced this with a CBN wheel and with the Wolverine jig that I use there's a video on how I set that up on my YouTube channel um, you get a repeatable grind it's uh, it's a really nice grinder and it's, it's you definitely need to have something because you want sharp tools um, underneath that I keep some little containers there with sanding discs for the uh, for the sanding pads sandpaper carving stuff and pen making stuff although the pen making stuff I don't really go in that anymore because like I said it's all in that uh, it's all in there now I purchased this block of cork which was from some exercise place it was on sale it's what you put your head on when you lay down I guess but uh, it's not what I'm going to use it for so when I put a piece of wood on here and I want to drill into it this is what stops the wood from blowing out so rather than wasting another piece of wood I just drill into this piece of uh, cork works great there's a louver door here which is a small room here which is where my hydro panel is and my hot water tank and in this corner I keep my uh, compressor which is right here and also my um, dust extractor and the hose for both the compressor just lays on the floor comes through the wall and lays on the floor there and for the dust extractor the hose pipe is laying on the ground right now I need to get something mounted over here that I can mount that and aim it right now it's just laying on the floor so that's something that still has to get properly properly put in place for anybody wanting to know about the bill buffing system I use it on pens mainly small things that I want to get really really shiny um, if I do a CA finish because sometimes I use a CA finish uh, especially on pens or if I've got an acrylic pen this will get all the finer scratches out so it comes with the three sticks that you need I do get a lot of questions about resin and cactus juice stabilizing and casting and vacuum chambers and pressure pots and what's the difference and what do you use why and when and all that good stuff so we could do a little rundown of that now I don't get paid by Alumalite or Magic Resin or Cactus people anybody I don't get paid by anybody for this it's just information that I'd like to share with you um, so the first thing we can talk about is stabilizing with cactus juice so the cactus juice comes like this pot right here so it's bagged and it's got the catalyst in this little pot here and the cactus juice there and you have to put that in there shake it before you use it um, you've got to be very 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 careful with this little uh, pot of activator um, because or the catalyst what it does it's it's under high pressure so there's a little membrane on top of that inside under the cap and as soon as you pierce that it starts pssst, it squirts right out so I highly recommend that when you take the lid off this that you take the lid off of both you invert the catalyst over the top of this and then you pierce it with a tool like a tooth um, pick 
something like that and it will squirt it will squirt straight into here instead of all over the ceiling or worse in your face I understand that this is something similar to chlorine I could be wrong but you certainly don't want that in your eyes it does actually say on it um, all of that it's under pressure it says it right there cautionary note but if you're not aware they they really do mean that it really is under pressure so uh, once it's activated you can leave it in there for a long long time it's not going to be a problem in fact I leave it in these pots as well with no lids on and it's not a problem and uh, in my vacuum chamber I've got a tub with some stuff in there too that's clear that's not got any color added to it um, and that's not a problem either um, the problem I do get is this lid on this type of uh, <clears throat> on this type of vacuum chamber because it's such a big area that that pressure is sucking down this has a tendency to crack now this has got a lot of cracks in it you can't really see them too clearly with the video I don't think but they're there so I, I actually do have a second a brand new one under the bench but uh, I would highly recommend the one that you get from Turntex I think William Woodwright sell them I'm not sure who else but uh, if I want to use the dyes the cactus juice dyes what I do is I got these little pots and I put some uh, clear cactus juice in there maybe an inch two inches and I'll add a few drops of dye different colors to different pots mix it up and I leave them on this tray uh, right now there's not much in any of them because I haven't done much casting lately um, and the colors been used up on other pens but uh, basically you you get blanks like this these have not actually been cooked they've just been sat here um, they do need to get cooked as do these ones which I, I put in here quite a long time ago they still need to go in the oven outside don't cook them in the basement or in the house or in an enclosed environment because they do give off a lot of fumes um, you've got to cook them at 200 degrees for about an hour an hour to two hours and uh, and then they'll be good to go I tend to cast them twice or sorry I tend to stabilize them twice the first time I'll do uh, red on one end and yellow on the other end or red and green or whatever and then um, I don't put that in the vacuum chamber I'll just soak them for half an hour each end and then I'll cook it but I won't necessarily put it in uh, tin foil you don't have to put it in tin foil it can drip drip dry or whatever inside the oven there's two options you can put it in this it's less mess in the toaster oven but you get a lot of stuff stuck to the blank whereas if you just let it drip dry inside the oven all of the stuff the excess will drip into the uh, toaster oven and it will be on the bottom of the toaster oven in a pan or something so that's just a few things to think about there um, Alumilite clear slow is what I use for all the small pen castings that I do um, it's equal parts by weight um, part A and part B and basically I put a pot on here these are nice because the resin doesn't actually stick to them so after after it's dried in here it literally peels right out so I've got three or four of them so if I'm using three or four colors I can put a different color in each but I'll start off with one of these mix it all in one of these weigh it equal parts mix it up really good for five minutes is what I do mix it up really good for five minutes and then separate it and then add the colors mix it up for another three or four minutes and basically you've got to get it in your mold there's some molds there you've got to get it in your mold and into the pressure pot within 12 minutes if you're doing uh, casting cones these are nice I like the small cones so let's talk a little bit about magic resin um, I honestly have only used it on a small uh, item really just for practice as yet but I'm planning on using it to make 
a couple of river tables and also larger pieces that won't go into the pressure pot. Now the nice thing about Magic Resin is well, first of all it's odorless and secondly it takes up to five days to set and it stays very watery for at least 24 hours which gives the bubbles enough time to escape whereas Alumilite Clear Slow after 12 minutes it's starting to get thick so uh, if you've got any bubbles in there after 12 minutes they're going to stay in there um, that's why you need to get it in the pressure pot but like I say with uh, Alumilite Clear Slow I tend to leave the moulds in there for about 3 hours and then I'll take the mould out and it's basically set now it takes five days to properly fully cure but after three hours I take it out of the pressure pot the pressure pot was set at 60 psi 55 60 psi and that works a charm that works great now uh, yeah Ma magic resin they've actually offered my uh, website uh, a coupon code for uh, a discount and uh, it is a Canadian company so uh, support them um, and that's why I bought some. I support them and I want to try it out. So I want to make a river table. I'll show you the piece of wood that I want to use. Um, I haven't actually even started it yet, but that's the plan. So uh, with this you have two parts A and one part B. And that's by measurement, not weight. So that's different to the uh, Lumilite Clear Slow. So let's take a look at that piece of wood that I plan on making a river table with. It was about a year ago a buddy of mine had a maple tree that was his neighbors cut down and he asked me if I would like some wood so I went around there and I took my um, chainsaw mill and we cut some up into uh, boards uh, this is one of the smaller ones it's about an inch thick and uh, it's about four feet long I guess and about 12 inches wide roughly and uh, it didn't crack a little bit of a crack there but not a big deal that's right in the center I actually thought it was going to crack but it didn't at all so I'm really pleased with it so as you can see I've marked a line because it has warped so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut down that line I'm going to put that onto the uh, joiner planer square off these ends and then I'll put this through the thickness planer the two pieces and then I'll uh, put them in a mold I'll make a mold and I'll put them in a mold, I'll clamp them down and I'll do the river table in the middle uh, now this was winter cut so the bark stayed on that's the problem um, with winter cut wood if you don't want the bark you're best to get wood that was cut in the spring or the summer if you want to retain the bark you want to get wood that was cut in the winter time um, so I'm going to have to remove the bark so I'll probably end up just grinding that off uh, somewhere in my shop I actually have a cut saw uh, for my grinder but I don't remember where I put it so once I find it I'll use that to remove all the bark so that's going to be one project the wood's not spectacular so what I might do is use the Lichtenberg fractal burner on it that's a possibility um, I haven't really thought too much about it yet it's just a project on the go but this is now dry and good to go it's been just over a year and it's an inch thick so that's dry now Let's talk about the table saw for a little bit. Okay, so this is my table saw. It's a Craftsman. It's probably 30 years old, I'm going to guess. It's a solid cast steel table with extensions on both sides. And uh, there is actually a fence, which I keep out of the way up there. And there is a uh, mitre gauge right there for it as well. I don't actually use that very often, in fact hardly at all, because I much prefer the sled that I made. It's much safer, keep your fingers out of the way. I just like that a lot, it's really cool. Um, it's all wood, there's no purchased parts other than this aluminum piece here, which is just something I happen to have, just to keep that a straight edge, because I knew that this was going to get cut here. Um, you want to make absolute certain that this is perfect this has to be perfectly 90 degrees to the blade so there's a bit of setup involved in making one of these and the runners you don't want any wiggle on the runners there's no wiggle at all in those runners which is good and that's pretty simple to do they're both hardwood runners maple 
and then in the end of the runners there's a screw in it which I just tighten up a little bit and it basically opens up the ends of the runners which makes it have no wiggle at all and they're tight to the insides so that works perfect now up here I got a couple of jigs that I made for the table saw that is for making mitre cuts with the table saw and it gives you measurements too uh, there's a little uh, clamp there which gives you a perfect uh, measurement for making window fr uh, window frames, picture frames. So that's a picture frame jig that I made. There is a website, or not a website, a YouTube video, and I'll try and find it and put a link to it in the description. Um, but that's a cool jig that I've used several times. And then this being a spline jig, again I'll see if I can find a link and I'll put that in the description too. But that rides on the fence, if I can get that. This rides on the fence, right here. And then you put your picture frame in here. And then this is where the bottom, the corner of your picture frame is, or whatever you're making, game board or whatever. And then you basically set it up with the height of the blade, the way you want it. And you, I clamp the piece to this and then it runs along the fence and it cuts them all the same. Having said that, you want the correct blade as well. So let's show you what the blade I use. So when I'm doing splines, I use this blade. It's a full kerf. And let me show you, I'll bring you in. As you can see, it's straight across. It's a full kerf by one eighth blade. So if you want to make splines to go into the the cut that you've made, you need one eighth thick stock for those splines. And each tooth is flat. There's 24 teeth and each tooth is straight across. They're not angled. They don't have a half kerf like a regular blade. So that's going to give you a, a better slot for that wood to go into and not leave a gap. So that's the blade I use for that. I got this, I believe, on Amazon. It's a good quality blade and I only use it for splines so it doesn't get used a whole lot but when I need it it's there it's the it's the uh, blade for the job segmenting is not something that I do at all actually but one day I might so in with that thought I put I made this uh, segmenting jig now I found a link or a video on YouTube again and followed those instructions and I've tried it and it does work good um, so, but to use this, I had to purchase these, which is the Seg Easy, Seggies, um, Seg Easy wedges. Now each one is labeled, this one's 36, so it's 10 degrees, there's 36, it will be 36 wedges that you need to make a complete circle, and, uh, you essentially put that in there. And you adjust if I can just oops, if I can do that yeah you adjust those in like that and then you tighten them down and then you remove the seg that's done its job and now you put the wood here and here you don't really want to put it in here because you don't get a whole lot of room so really it depends on the size of the piece of wood you've got Let's just take this for an example. You would take this wood and you would come down here, set this up for the measurement you want. Again, this was part of the kit that I uh, made. You can adjust this to make whatever size wedge you want. So you would put that in there, come across and make that cut. And then you would come over here Without moving this, it's just from here to here. Again, bring it up here, push it up to that, and make the cut. And the piece that you cut off is gonna fall down. Um, I would probably make this a little bit different. Maybe, maybe cut it a little bit closer because sometimes the piece sits here and the blade catches it and it throws it. So that's not fun. Uh, so always wear a face shield and all your protection. But uh, this thing has actually got magnets. I put magnets in there, so it sticks. It sticks there exactly wherever I want it. So it's not bolted down. It's just held there with uh, magnets, 
and once you put it there it doesn't move and then whenever I'm done with the table saw I always put the blade down and I always unplug it uh, with each use so uh, now what I do need to make is some more of these zero clearance plates for this is what I need to make and I'll show you why something that I bought for the shop that I thought I would use but I haven't used it yet but one of these days maybe I will so what I'll have to do is make some zero clearance plates just like this the same size out of a hardwood um, I'd probably use maple and then what I would then do I'd make probably four sets four or five plates like that and then have it screwed down and then basically have these set up at different sizes and then gradually bring them up through the through the uh, zero clearance plate so that there's one for each set or for each size that it can do and honestly I'm not too familiar with it I haven't used it yet I've only had it for four years so there's no rush <laughs> So many of you do know me from uh, Woodley Summercraft, a small business in southern Ontario in Canada. Um, I've basically managed to turn what has been a hobby and a passion into a small business. Um, it's thanks to my dad here, otherwise I would never have done it. Um, he had a workshop set up in his house where he lived and I just decided to, to give it a go. And, uh, my father-in-law came over from the UK and he was a, he's a wood turner too so I asked him if he would take me down the, my dad's workshop because it was still set up this was seven years after he passed away and we had a go and he showed me how to turn a bowl and a couple of things and I took it from there and YouTube's been a huge help and a huge influence on a lot of things that I do and uh, it also gives you an opportunity to uh, try and keep up with the Joneses so to speak because you want to if you especially if you're going to put it on display like I am here uh, you're showing people around the whole world essentially whoever wants to watch it both of you <laughs> um, anyway yeah so it's it's cool because it, it gives you the opportunity to know how to make jigs and uh, how to set up your workshop and, uh, and make use of the space and the time that you have and enjoy it it's a lot of fun so uh, I appreciate it if you check out the link here www.woodleysummercraft.ca and uh, especially if you're in Canada and uh, check out the products that I have I do carry uh, a bunch of stuff that I uh, import from the UK Yorkshire grit abrasive paste you all know what that is and Hampshire sheen gloss and the variety of products from the UK from the Hampshire sheen I do have some new stock coming in shortly so uh, I'll be fully stocked with everything that you guys need in Canada. Starbond 2 has offered me a coupon code which you can find on my website and uh, hit, there's a link in the description to that too where you can go ahead and purchase Starbond at a discount price and uh, if you do I'd appreciate using my link because I get a little bit of a kickback from that which is, uh, which is always nice. I appreciate that. But it's not just that, I do woodworking obviously uh, and that's the primary focus is enjoying being a wood turner and a wood worker. Right now I've got a bunch of walnut down here on the floor which I need to cut up and turn into a countertop. A three foot by six foot countertop and a two foot by two foot countertop and then a couple of shelves too I think he needs. So uh, I need to get that done um, but I'm going to need a, a hand because it's heavy. So if you've got a minute stop by my shop and give me a hand with that I'd appreciate it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I'll try and get some more videos out soon uh, with some projects that I'm going to make. Covid really threw a, a wang into everything and uh, it's just been a crazy couple of years. Uh, like I said, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I'll see you again for the next wood turning project. Take care now.